before anything touches your wine or must, you want to sanitize it. I just got some cleanser, sanitizer, and I am sanitizing everything that I'm going to use for this step today. First step you want to do is bring about four or five gallons of water to a boil. I got four gallons. I got two in that one and two in this one. Next step you want to do is mash or smash all your berries. I already cut all the greens off of these. Add it to your bucket and smash it. Three to five pounds per gallon. I have roughly 20 pounds of strawberries here. Or three pounds per gallon would be 18. So a little, a little more never hurts. And then on to the next step. Okay, the berries are all smushed. Uh, I got about two and a half gallons of just uh, sweet strawberry nectar numbness. Num num. So now you have to sanitize this must by adding boiling water. Just a tip, you always want to pour away from your nut torch. It's right at six gallons. So now that you added the boiling water, just give it a stir, mix everything up really well. And then we'll cover this and let this cool overnight before we add the yeast. This next step is optional. You can choose to pitch the wine right into your must, or pitch the yeast right into your must if you want. Or you can make a yeast starter. I found that when I make a yeast starter, it makes everything go by better because your your yeast is multiplied. It makes everything go quicker and smoother. So you can use any yeast you want. I got these for different batches, probably for my blueberry. But for my strawberry, because I like it so much, I bought the expensive stuff. What I do is I get this out, get it to room temperature. For the yeast starter, you're going to want dry malt extract. Any dry malt extract will work. I have 750 milliliters of water for one half cup of DME, dry malt extract. So what you want to do is mix, mix them both together and then bring it to a boil, stir occasionally, and once it's to a boil, let it boil for about maybe one minute or so. And we'll bring it over to a cool bath and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, this has been uh, boiling for about a minute. So I'm going to... We're going to pour it back in the flask. Take some aluminum foil, put it over the top, keep all the bugs or stuff out of it. Then you're going to want to put cool water around it. So it's good enough to where it's going to cover that, or pretty close to it, and it's not going to float around and let it sit to cool down. It should take maybe five, 10 minutes at that. Okay, now that the dry malt is cooled down, we're gonna add the yeast. Okay, once you have the yeast in there, all you wanna do is attach your foam bung or whatever you wanna call it. And then you want to stir it. Give it a good stirring. Now, just set it on the counter. And stir it every now and then. Alright, it's been about an hour. And the yeast is starting to work. I don't know if you can see the little bubbles starting to come up. So what you want to do is you want to stir this about once every hour for a couple hours before you, before you go to bed. When you wake up in the morning, you do not want to stir it. It'll separate just like it is now. You can kind of see that layer right there. It'll separate and then you will pour out the top and then pour that directly into berries that we're still waiting for it to cool. All right, it's been about an hour later since I stirred it. So when I stir it this time, I'm gonna be a little careful because it's gonna to wanna to overflow. Okay, after you let your uh, juice and everything cool down overnight, <clears throat> you need to take an acid reading. I already did it, and I had to add, I think it was, I finished out at, I think it was 
which was just under fruit line and I needed to raise it 0.5 percent so what you do is you follow the instructions that come I I get the acid testing kit follow the instructions after you've done it a couple times it's pretty simple and then you add the appropriate acid blend which is all in these instructions of how much you have to add and I'm going to make a note that not every juice that you have needs to have its acidity adjusted. Some of them are right on. I've had some of them right on. I've had some of them pretty far off. After you adjusted your acid, you want to add your peptic enzyme. Uh, you want to add this one hour before you add your yeast and yeast nutrient. So this says add half teaspoon per gallon. So I got six gallons, so that's going to be three teaspoons. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, one hour later, after you add your peptic enzyme, you're going to want to add your yeast and your yeast nutrient. All the yeast right here is on the bottom. So I'm going to want to pour off as much as I can, but I'm still going to leave a little bit of wort or DME on top so I can mix it up with this so I can be able to pour it out. <laughs> to the bottom, but I want to leave just enough in there to where I can still swirl it around. Okay, there's the yeast. I'm going to stir that in. And I'm also going to add the yeast nutrient, which says one teaspoon per gallon. So six teaspoons I'll add to this. And then stir it all in. And then after that, you stir it once a day for three to five days. I forgot to tell you that you're going to want to leave this lid open, or just leave it cracked open a little bit. But I take a towel and I put the towel over top of it just to keep all the bugs, flies, and everything else out of it. Okay, this is... Uh, the next day, after putting the yeast in it, you'll notice that all the berries and everything are floating. Give it a good stirring. You can hear it too if you listen carefully. Day two, stirring. Now you want to strain off all the pulp that's in here. Um, I stirred this once a day for three days. Today's day four, so strain off all the pulp. What I use is this mesh screen, whatever. And once I run it through once with that, I put some cheesecloth over top of this, and then I run it through again to get most of the solids out. So go ahead and do that. What helps now is to have another bucket. Another brewing bucket's nice because you can fit it all in there, but. I have two other five gallon buckets. I got these at Home Depot or Lowe's, food grade. I keep these buckets specifically just for making wine. And just another tip to help things speed things up. What I do is I take all the stuff that's on the top, kind of just strain out most of the liquid, and then I just put it right in the garbage. So everything that you strain out, all the, all the pulp and everything, just go ahead and throw away because what you want is just that juice in the end. This is where one of those brewing bags might come in handy. I guess you put all your fruit in a bag already, like a cheesecloth bag or something. I've always done it this way, but I've never tried the brewing bag, so I'm just doing what I'm comfortable with. But you want to just get rid of all this pulp. Okay, so this next step you're going to add sugar. 
And then after you add your sugar, you're gonna put it in the carboy. I have a hydrometer right here, and I take a, an initial read. And it is right around 1.0. It is right at 1.0, which is right there. I want it to be, I usually put my, it's right on this uh, hydrometer, it's got potential alcohol scale. Potential alcohol. That's 10%, I usually put it about 11 or 12%, so right around, right where this uh, white, in between table and dessert wine is where I usually put it. Which that is, it starts out as 1.0 specific gravity. When I add the sugar, I want it to be about 1.90. That'll give me 11, 12%. And then it usually finishes a little below 1.0. So I actually get about another 1% out of it. So I usually get about 13% alcohol in my wine. So what I'm going to do now is add probably about half of that. Add about 5 pounds in here and then take another hydrometer read and see where it's at. I'll probably have to add maybe, maybe all of that 10 pounds. We'll see. And obviously you pour it in there, you stir it, and then you, you check again with a hydrometer. Okay, I added a little more than half, so I added probably about 7 pounds. And right now, I am at 1.60. I want 1.90, so I'm going to add the rest of that sugar, and then I have another 4 pounds here. I'll probably have the rest of that, and then half of this. Let's see where we're at. Okay, so I'm at 12 pounds total. The hydrometer in and eh, about 11 and a half percent so I'm right at that mark that I wanted to be at by adding sugar it is not this does not make it sweeter the more sugar you add it just makes for more of a potential for alcohol what happens is the yeast eats the sugar and poops out alcohol and carbon dioxide and it'll finish completely dry. We will back sweeten later. So now we have that set. What we're gonna do is pour it into the carboy. And this is where uh, another hand is handy just to hold this tight on there because things can get messy quickly. Okay, after you have your wine in your carboy, you want to attach an airlock. I always fill it about halfway with water. See, this one's already pushing. What happens is the yeast will create carbon dioxide when it eats the sugar, and it'll also create alcohol. So, you want the gases to escape. Once you have the airlock on there, you just want this to finish out. You'll know when it's done because all of the uh, your your airlock will stop bubbling, and you'll see there's no bubbles coming. So, anywhere from one to three months, that's the time for this step. All right, this is about an hour later. Well, I forgot to tell you guys, you might not want to fill this all the way because it seems like some fruit like to foam up. So far, strawberries hasn't been too bad for me, but blackberry will foam right up. It, I usually leave blackberry down here. So I just fill it up enough. But as you can see, it's going pretty good. Carbon dioxide bubbles. So you know that yeast is roaring. This one will probably finish out in a couple weeks just by the way that it's going. And this is just extra. I just put it in a small demijohn. So <clears throat> when this is done, there'll be some sediment on the bottom and I'll lose some volume from that sediment. I'll add this into that after I get the sediment out of this. So remember when I told you not to fill it up too much? Well, we had a little bit of a explosion here. Not explosion, but the foam came up and now I made a mess. So, what I do now is just take this out, clean out the airlock, put more water in it, put it back on. Get everything clean. But it's still roaring pretty good. After it's done fermenting, it's been, I don't know, maybe three weeks. You can see it's pretty clear. There's sediment on the bottom, and there's barely any carbon dioxide coming up. Just about none. So we're all settled down. After that, we're going to we're going to degas it, and we're going to back sweeten it, and then we're going to put the fining agent in it. The degas and sweetening is optional. You don't have to do it. Um, right now, this is finished dry. You could just skip the 
degas and sweeten and you can just go right to the finding agent if you want your wine to be dry. I don't, I like to have it right about semi-sweet. I like it right in the middle, right in between sweet and dry. Not too sweet, not too dry. To degas it, take it from this, rack it from your carboy and your demijohn into the bucket. Try to get as much of the clear liquid as I can. Don't get any of the sediment on the bottom. And this is how I do that. I have, I put it in the wine just so it's above the, uh, the all the yeast and sediment on the bottom. Cause I don't want, I don't want to suck up any of that stuff on the bottom. I want just the juice on top. So I uh, put it in there like that. Give it a couple short bursts with that. Get it flowing. And as you're siphoning it out, you're going to want to fill up a couple glasses of wine and a beaker. This is just to take a final hydrometer read because it's going to tell you how much alcohol content is in there. And then the glasses of wine are just to help me with back sweeten and the process and how I back sweeten. Okay, everything's into the bucket. Before I degas, I just want to take a quick reading to see what alcohol content I have in here. I believe I started at 11, 12%, because I believe I was right in the Goldilocks zone right here. So I believe I started at 12% potential, and we'll see where it finishes out at. So, we'll put it in here, in the beaker. And we are well below zero. We are 0 0.990. That is 1% less than zero. So we started out at 12. We went all the way to 12 and then past 12 to 13. But now we're going to degas. First thing I do is add potassium metabisulfate. This is only a quarter teaspoon per six gallons. This is some strong stuff, so you don't want to add too much. Add a quarter teaspoon of this, mix it in, and then add a half a teaspoon of potassium sorbate per gallon. One kills the yeast, the other one prevents it from ferment fermenting again because we are adding more sugar, and if the yeast isn't dead, then it's gonna just keep adding, want to add more sugar or add more alcohol. Okay, I've just added my potassium metabisulfate and potassium sorbate. And now I'm going to mix it in using a wine whip. And what you want to do is you don't want to, you want to stir it. You don't want to introduce oxygen into it. You just want to get the carbon dioxide out of it. I'll do this for about five to 10 minutes with the drill. If you're stirring by hand, you probably want to do it maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. All right, it's been about 10 minutes later, 10, 15 minutes. Um, and you can see that just about all the bubbles are gone. So now I am going to move on to sweetening. So the way I sweeten is I have a bunch of small samples here. I add a quarter teaspoon of sweetener at a time to each one, starting at the least amount of sweetest going to the most amount of sweet sweetness. And then once I find out the taste I like, I take that, jar, or that glass, I put it in my beaker, and I find the hydrometer read. Um, this one, I went from 1.980 to just about 1.0. And that mixture was a half a teaspoon of strawberry syrup and I believe three quarters of a teaspoon of white grape juice. And then once I get the specific gravity I like, I match it to my big batch. So all I'm doing here is taking a bunch of small samples, finding the specific gravity, finding the sweetness I like, which is correlates to the specific gravity, and I match it to my big batch. I'm gonna pour um, two things of syrup and these two things of white grape juice in there. Okay, now that we've back sweetened it, we're going to take it and put it back in the carboy through the funnel. And then we're going to put our fining agents in. This one says add the ketosol ketosol add that one hour before you add the cheetah so i'm just going to take <clears throat> i'm going to take it put it in the carboy and then i will add this the a1 the ketosol i'll add this and then i'll wait one hour and i'll add then i'll add the cheetah sand and then you let it sit for about a week or so you can see it coagulating and everything <clears throat> sinking to the bottom and it'll be crystal clear when you're done 
and I, I'm able to do that because I have this wine whip. It fits right in the top of that. I can mix everything in there and it works well. Carboy, Kia Sol, wait one hour, cheetah sand, let it sit for a week or so, and then you're ready to bottle. I forgot to tell you, after I added the Kia Sol, I just put my uh, airlock back on there. You don't want any bugs or anything getting back in there. Keeps the oxygen out of there too. And then I'll put it back over in the corner and I'll put the towel back around it, keep the sunlight off of it. About a week later after it settles, you'll notice it's nice and crystal clear. You got a little bit of sediment on the bottom. Now we're going to bottle. You want to get all your bottles. You want to fill up your sink to sanitize the bottles. Be bright cleanser. Take my bottle, fill it up. And then rinse them out and then put them over there upside down to dry all right now it's time to bottle we're going to use our pump siphon this goes in the wine you pump this up and down and that creates a siphon and then it goes into the bottle which this is in the bottle and this has to be depressed in order to let it flow so we're going to do that right now so this helps by just doing short little bursts with this and once you get all the air out of the, out of the line, here's you fill it up to about almost the top of the neck. Okay, now you got all your bottles full. It looks delicious. You need to put a cork in it. There you have it. Delicious strawberry wine. All right, here's the final take. I have 20 small bottles, four large bottles, a glass, and I already gave one of these bottles to my dad.